on World News Tonight. China strikes back. China warns of harsh retaliation over the US's downing of its alleged civilian balloon. Stepping down. The First Minister Sturgeon resigned citing that Scotland's independence will be hastened under another. Rumbling relations. You are my enemy, says South Korea to the north as Yoon Seok Yeol releases his administration's first white paper. And it's a wrap. The theme of romantic futurism put together in closing out the New York Fashion Week. This is Adaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and you're joining us on World News with leading stories across the planet. Now, several Russian strategic bombers and fighter jets were intercepted by North American Air Defense Forces as they flew over international airspace near Alaska. The North American Aerospace Defense Command said in routine incidents unrelated to tensions over the war in Ukraine. The Joint U.S.-Canadian Center said in a statement the aircraft did not enter U.S. or Canadian airspace and did not pose a threat. It added that the Russian flights were in no way related to the mysterious spate of airborne objects shot down by the U.S. military over North America in the past few weeks, the details of which remain unknown. The United States also frequently carries out surveillance operations that do not enter other countries' airspace, and such flights are a common part of military operations. Russia said on Wednesday that it had carried out several flights over international waters in recent days, including in the Bering Sea between Alaska and Russia. It said two of its Tu-95MS strategic missile carriers had flown over the Bering Sea accompanied by Su-30 jets, and that it had made similar routine flights north of Norway and over international waters near Russia's far east. While Russia has carried out flights over the Bering Sea before, its neighbors in the region have become more concerned about Moscow's military activity since its invasion of Ukraine last year. The Netherlands Defense Ministry said in a statement, two Dutch F-35 fighters intercepted a formation of three Russian military aircraft near Poland and escorted them out. NATO member states have also ramped up military exercises in the Arctic in recent years, as Russia has expanded and renewed its military infrastructure in the region. Russian forces claim some battlefield success as Moscow's invasion of Ukraine labored to gain momentum almost a year after it began. The Russian Defense Ministry said that its troops broke through through Ukrainian defensive lines in the eastern Luhansk region and pushed back Ukrainian troops, forcing them to leave behind equipment and the bodies of those killed. These Ukrainian soldiers say that Russians have suffered big losses as they continue to knock back their advances. But in Ukraine's Donbass region, the pressure is increasing. The enemy's artillery and mortar attacks have increased. Previously, there were a couple of attacks a day, but now there are more than 10 attacks a day. Bakhmut is the bloodiest battle of this war, according to both sides. What was a small city of 70,000 people before the war has seen fierce fighting as Russia continues its campaign in the eastern industrial zone. Ukrainian forces fear a massive counteroffensive as the anniversary of the invasion approaches. The situation on the front line, especially in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, remains extremely difficult. It is literally a battle for every meter of Ukrainian land. Civilians have taken refuge in the village of Chasivya, just 15 kilometers from Bakhmut. Many remain hopeful that they will return home soon. Wagner. Russia's mercenary group spearheading the campaign in Bakhmut say they do not expect to take the city anytime soon, despite claiming gains in nearby villages. This battle has become a symbol of Ukraine's resistance. China intends to take unspecified countermeasures in response to the U.S. government shooting down a suspected Chinese spy balloon over the Atlantic Ocean as the fallout continues over the balloon ahead of a potential meeting between U.S. and Chinese officials. After the U.S. military's recent takedown of what it called a Chinese spy balloon in U.S. airspace, China on Wednesday threatened to retaliate against U.S. entities in an escalating diplomatic spat. Washington and Beijing are locked in a tussle over flying objects after the U.S. military this month shot down what it called a Chinese spy balloon over the coast of South Carolina. Beijing says its balloon was a civilian research vessel, mistakenly blown off course, and that Washington overreacted. 
This week, China countered that U.S. balloons had flown over its airspace without permission more than 10 times in the last year, a claim Washington denies. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman told an audience at a Brookings Institute event on Wednesday that the accusation is false. Washington has added six Chinese entities connected to Beijing's suspected surveillance balloon program to an export blacklist, angering the Chinese. The balloon dispute has delayed efforts by both sides to mend relations, although U.S. President Joe Biden has also said that he does not believe ties between the two countries were weakened by the incident. And sources have said that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who postponed a planned trip to Beijing over the balloon, is considering meeting China's top diplomat in Munich this week. Nicola Sturgeon has resigned from her position as Scotland's first minister, acknowledging that her previous commanding influence over both her party and the country is no longer an advantage in the push for Scottish independence. After eight years as both Scotland's leader and the face of the country's independence movement, Nicola Sturgeon is stepping aside. Giving absolutely everything of yourself to this job is the only way to do it. The country deserves nothing less. But in truth, that can only be done by anyone for so long. For me, it is now in danger of becoming too long. Sturgeon said the unexpected decision wasn't a reaction to short-term pressures. Though she's enjoyed strong popularity throughout her time in power, Sturgeon has recently become embroiled in a row over whether transgender women should be housed in all-female prisons. A panel-based poll showed 42% of Scots wanted the First Minister to step down immediately. The poll found more than three-quarters of sceptics had safety concerns around the Scottish Parliament's gender recognition reform bill. Sturgeon's SNP party also suffered a blow in November, when the UK's top court ruled the Scottish government couldn't hold a second referendum without approval from the British Parliament. Sturgeon then said she would turn the next British general election into a de facto referendum. Now, she says, her resignation leaves the party free to make a collective decision on this without her influence. No obvious successor is waiting in the wings. Analysts say the First Minister's departure will leave a vacuum within the SNP party, with Sturgeon's leadership having contained internal disputes on the way forward for independence in recent years. Now, despite escaping to Turkey to seek asylum from the civil war in Syria, Syrian refugees face yet another humanitarian crisis in Turkey as both the prior and Turkish citizens face aid shortages following the deadly earthquake that struck both Turkey and Syria earlier this month. Hassan Soumani and his family fled the war in Syria to come to Turkey in 2015. On the 6th of February, they found their life upturned once again. They now live in this makeshift camp set up in a football stadium in Gaziantep, southern Turkey, along with 1,000 other families. Volunteers from a Syrian students' union in universities across Turkey have come to help. Back in their home country, relief efforts have been hampered by the civil war. On Tuesday, a second and third border crossing for aid to pass through to rebel-held areas from Turkey was finally opened after President Bashar al-Assad relented but the heavy machinery required to remove rubble and rebuild quickly is not forthcoming. The massive earthquake killed tens of thousands of people, puts millions in need of aid and caused tens of billions of euros of damage. Even nine days on, rare survivors are still being pulled from the rubble, but the UN has said the rescue phase is drawing to a close. We're going into a short commercial break now. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News tonight. Now, South Korea's first defense white paper under the Yoon suk yeol administration has been released. It focused on ramping up differences against North Korea, which it once again defines as an enemy of the Seoul and all South Koreans. North Korea is once again defined as South Korea's enemy in the Yoon suk yeol administration's first defense white paper. As anticipated, the Defense Ministry's 2022 white paper revives the line that was removed under the previous Moon Jae-in government, asserting that the North Korean regime and its military are South Korea's enemy. 
In doing so, the report refers to how the North described the South as a clear enemy in December and how Pyongyang aims for the communization of the entire Korean Peninsula. It also points to the North's continued military provocations and incursions into the South, as well as maritime buffer zones, particularly its violations of the 2018 inter-Korean agreement on diffusing tensions across the heavily armed border. According to the White Paper, Pyongyang has also continued to produce weapons-grade nuclear materials. The paper also added seven new models to the list of the North's known projectiles. These include close-range and short-range ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, hypersonics, and the massive Hwasong-17 intercontinental ballistic missile. In light of these threats, Seoul aims to strengthen its three-axis system, focusing more on the preemptive strikes and retaliatory measures that could take up the North Korean leadership. It also highlights the pivotal role of the South Korea-US alliance, with more detail on implementing Washington's extended deterrence policy that offers security assurance under conventional or nuclear attack. In its bid to strengthen security ties with Washington and Tokyo, Seoul describes Japan as a close neighbour which shares its values, highlighting the need to build futuristic cooperative relations. Still, Seoul says it remains firmly against Japan's revisionist historical and territorial claims. Looking beyond the Korean Peninsula, South Korea also sets out to play a greater role in regional security. Mpox, previously known as monkeypox, is still a global public health emergency. This is according to the World Health Organization, which says the threat still remains in many countries, suffering from under-detection and under-reporting. The World Health Organization has determined that Mpox, previously known as monkeypox, is still considered a public health emergency of international concern. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, speaking to the press on Wednesday, said the decision follows the advice of the UN Health Agency's Emergency Committee. Mpox, which spreads via close contact and causes flu-like symptoms and skin lesions, was declared a global health emergency by the WHO in July 2022. The health agency maintained its alert in November. Its committee of experts in its meeting last week did acknowledge the decline in Mpox infections around the world. The committee said that since the fourth quarter of 2022, the outbreak has subsided globally. In fact, global infections have declined from more than 1,000 new infections a day at their peak in the summer of 2022 to less than 70 a day during the month of January this year. However, the committee took into consideration the fact that the virus still remains a threat in some countries, especially countries in Africa, with low testing rates and weak surveillance systems. Dr. Tedros pointed out that more than 30 countries continue to report cases, and the possible under-detection and under-reporting of confirmed cases in some regions are concerning. The WHO's emergency committee will reconvene in three months to reassess the situation. Hundreds of flights were either cancelled or delayed, leaving thousands stranded under the airline. Lufthansa experienced an IT failure. More than 200 flights were cancelled in Frankfurt, Germany, which serves as a hub for the German-based airline. An IT failure at Lufthansa stranded thousands of passengers on Wednesday. The airline blamed underground engineering works at a railway station in Frankfurt, which it said had cut several broadband cables. It said repairs would take until the afternoon, citing information it received from Deutsche Telekom. Meanwhile, there were reports of thousands of passengers struggling to board flights. On social media, some travellers said they were being checked in with pen and paper while computer systems were down. At Frankfurt Airport, around 200 flights were cancelled. German air traffic controllers said Lufthansa planes could no longer depart. That meant parking spots were full for incoming jets, which then had to be diverted. Lufthansa refused to confirm media reports that it had grounded all services, saying some flights were still in the air. Its shares fell over 1% following news of the problems, but later paired some of the losses. Now travellers to Germany may have more pain to come. Wednesday's IT failure comes two days ahead of strike action that is expected to cause further major disruption at the country's airports. 
Nearly two weeks after Norfolk Southern train carrying hazardous material derailed in eastern Ohio village of East Palestine and sparked a massive days-long blaze, residents packed a high school gym for a meeting with officials, all demanding the same thing. Answers. Outrage growing less than two weeks after that massive train derailment and the controlled burn of hazardous chemicals sent up a toxic plume of black smoke in East Palestine, Ohio. Residents demanding answers, complaining of burning eyes, nausea, headaches and a pungent odor and reporting dead animals. Officials confirming 3,500 fish killed by the chemicals. State officials now suggest drinking bottled water after telling evacuated residents it was safe to return home. The governor, who approved that controlled burn of toxic chemicals to prevent an explosion, was asked if he'd return home if he lived near the crash site, where crews now work to remove soil and wreckage possibly contaminated by chemicals like vinyl chloride, suspected of causing cancer. Janet Hill, a breast cancer survivor, says she has a constant cough and sore throat and worries about her firefighter son, who spent days working the crash site. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Eight-time Constructors Champion Mercedes-AMG Petronas F1 team unveiled their 2023 Challenger in the presence of their drivers, seven-time world champion Sir Lewis Hamilton, George Russell and team principal Toto Wolff. Wolff said the team would be going all-in to return to dominate in the front of the pack. New Zealand stepped up recovery efforts after Cyclone Gabriel left at least five people dead and deplaced 9,000 in the country's most damaging storm in decades. Area footage showed building in Hawkes Bay, town of Wairoa, still uninundated with floods and authorities evacuated people using helicopters. Caribbean paleontologists have unearthed the skull of a prehistoric sperm whale. The four-foot-long skull belonged to an adult whale of whom researchers say was preserved in the desert for seven million years. Thousands of people took to the streets of Colombia's major cities to protest social and economic reforms that left his president, Gustavo Petro, presented to Congress. Policies, he says, will improve access to health care and to protect people's rights, but which opponents say will aid criminals. The Russia Dortmund smashed a 1-0 victory over Chelsea in their Champions League, round of 16 first leg tie courtesy of Karim Adyemi's superb goal or extending their winning run this year. That wraps up tonight's edition of World News Tonight. And if you couldn't watch us on here, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight with the closing of the New York Fashion Week with the idea of romantic futurism. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.